Hi, and welcome to 31 Notes, the series where I talk about cool sounds that happen when you have 31 notes. Today, we are going to be talking about the overtone scale in 31 equal. This is a scale which is an approximation of overtones 8 to 16 from the harmonic series. So we could call this harmonic 8, indicating it's an 8 note scale based on the harmonic series. Uh, Sometimes you'll hear this called the acoustic scale. 12 equal has its own variation, although it is not anywhere near as close as 31 equal. I also sometimes call this the ultra harmonic chord or the ultra harmonic scale. Basically, it's 31 equals best attempt at approximating the first 8 to 16 overtones. In terms of the vibe for the sound, it's very buzzy, it's very metallic, it's very overwhelming, it's a massive, monstrous, almost eerie sort of sound. I sort of feel like when I hear the harmonic 8 to 16 structure, it sounds a little bit like I'm sort of staring into the face of this infinite void, sort of some sonic god. I tend to think of this as a very divine or celestial, when you hear it, it really stands out. It's honestly quite hard to confuse this sound for anything else because it always has this buzz-like quality to it or this ringing quality to it. Now in 31 equal, the ring is a little bit more subdued. It ends up sounding a little bit more washy and a little bit more blurry. And that's almost a cool vibe. You can take that sort of huge, divine, buzzy, crazy sound and then make it foggy and fuzzy and then you get what we're gonna be playing with today the overtone 8 to 16 approximation in 31 equal. It's a pretty decent approximation. Uh, If we start to stack it up, we get a root, we get two, major third, super fourth, perfect fifth, the neutral six, the harmonic seven, the major seven, which is kind of a unique note here. So we're gonna put a little sort of dotted line below this one. And then lastly, the octave. In terms of notes, if we're spelling this in A, we're gonna have the note A and then a B natural. We'll have our C sharp as our major third. We'll have a D semi sharp, giving us that 11th harmonic sound. And then we've got our perfect fifth with E. Now we have this F semi sharp. This is gonna be our neutral six sound. And then we have our harmonic seven, which is the sort of sesqui flat seven. And then this sort of in parentheses, G sharp as major seven. Now each of these notes approximate some various harmonics. So so the second harmonic is approximated by the octave. The third harmonic is approximated by our perfect fifth. The fifth harmonic is approximated by our major third. The seventh harmonic is our harmonic seventh sound. We've got our added ninth, our harmonic 11, really important super fourth, the harmonic 13, which is like a neutral 13, and then this sort of really high major seven sound. The step pattern for this scale is really interesting. Because it is spacing around a harmonic approximation, the step sizes get incrementally smaller. So we start out with step sizes of five, and then step sizes of four, and then step sizes of three to close out the octave. This is very common of these harmonic structures because the harmonic series gradually gets smaller as you go higher and higher. So whenever you're trying to approximate it inside of other systems, regular systems are naturally a little bit more challenged in doing that. In terms of our EDO step pattern for this scale, it's going to be a zeroth EDO step, so our root right here, and then it will be a five up, which is going to give us our major second, and then the tenth EDO step, which is going to give us our major third. The fourteenth EDO step is going to act like our eleventh harmonic approximation right here, our super fourth or neutral fourth sound. The 18th EDO step is going to act like our perfect fifth. The 22nd EDO step is going to act like our neutral sixth sound, that 13th harmonic approximation. The 25th EDO step acts like our harmonic seven. And then the 28th EDO step acts like our major seven. 
Now, I like to think about this scale as an optional major seven. The major seven is a really tricky note to add simply because the way the major seven gets voiced in the harmonic series, it's all the way up here in the 15th overtone, and so we've already had our seventh harmonic. There is a natural clash between the harmonic seventh and the major seven, so if you do want to voice all eight notes of the scale, make sure that you pay special attention in how you treat the harmonic seven against the major seven. Typically, you'll want to put the harmonic seven two octaves lower than the major seven, or you can space it so the harmonic seven acts more like an augmented six, and then you can have like a major seven with a falling augmented six an octave or two up. But in general, if you're using this scale, probably use a seven note variation where you're pivoting between using the harmonic seven or the major seven. When you try to fit both of them in, it kind of gets a little cacophonous unless you really space it carefully. In terms of associated chords with the structure, you can play this over basic major chords, which creates a really interesting voicing for regular major sounds. You can also just write harm or harmonic, and that can imply the first eight to 16 overtones of the sound. You could write something like a C harmonic seven with a neutral 11 or a super 11. Both of those would work fine. You could write a C with a neutral 13, so a major chord with a neutral 13. You could do C major 7 with neutral 13 or C major 7 with the uh, semi sharp 11. So normally people will think about Lydium, but this is more like harmonic major 7 stuff. And then we've got like a C sus with a semi sharp 4. So the normal sort of sus 4 quality, but instead of perfect 4th, you have that harmonic 11. And then something like an add to with a semi sharp 4 and a neutral 13. There are all sorts of variations, and there are a lot of different modal rotations that you can do for this. Every musician should understand what exists within the first 16 harmonics of the overtone series. Here is what it looks like on a fifths wheel, and here is what it looks like on the chromatic wheel. Both of them look a little weird because it's not really a regular structure. It has this changing step size. One really important thing you'll want to keep in mind is the relative error of each approximation. So here we have the actual overtones, we have the ratios as if they were in a scale, we have the sense of those ratios, and then now down here we have the EDO step and the EDO step in sense. This will allow us to figure out the relative error from actual just intonation. So for instance, our ninth harmonic approximation is going to be our fifth EDO step. It's actually going to be 10 cents flat because the one that we get in 31 equal exists at about 193.5 cents, but the actual just intonated 9-8 version is 204 cents approximately. This approximation of the ninth overtone, it doesn't really seem that bad, I mean only 10 cents, but it really does make a significant difference in the sound. It kind of makes the sound more foggy and more warbly. If we look at the fifth harmonic or the tenth overtone approximation here, we see that it's only off by about a cent. This is a really appealing feature of 31 equal. You basically get just intonated five fours. The eleventh harmonic approximation is off by about ten cents. A lot of people will say, oh, 10 cents isn't that big of an error, but honestly, this doesn't really sound like an 11th harmonic. It's a lot closer to the Novum Decimal Super Fourth, so that's how I tend to hear this. The third harmonic approximation, or the 12th harmonic, is off by about 5 cents. So our perfect fifth in 31 is flat by about 5 cents. So then we have our 13th harmonic here, this is really frustrating because the 13th harmonic is sharp by 13 cents in 31 equal, but the 11th harmonic is flat by 10 cents. So you actually end up with this relative error between the two around 20 cents, and that makes for a big issue when you're trying to create something like the 11 to 13 minor third. The 11 to 13 minor third is about 289 cents, and we can see in 31 equal, yeah, we definitely don't have that, right? We actually have something at 270 cents right here, 
and something at 309. So we really miss that almost entirely. And it really reflects in the relationship between its 11th harmonic approximation and the 13th harmonic approximation. One of the huge benefits of 31 equal is this seventh harmonic approximation, or in this case, the 14th harmonic or the seventh harmonic. This is only off by a cent. It is so close, so accurate. This works amazingly for that seventh harmonic sound. And then lastly, approximated by this eight note scale, the 15th harmonic. The 15th harmonic is like the relaxed major seven in the harmonic series. It's basically 1088 cents. It's the 15 over eight ratio. And in 31 equal, we're about five cents flat on this. be very comfortable in hearing and using the first 16 harmonics of the overtone series. These form a lot of the key relationships that underlie general music as a whole, and it also contains some of the most novel interval regions, like the 11th harmonic interval spectrum area, or the 13th harmonic interval spectrum area, or the 29th. The 29th harmonic sounds incredible, and enriching our ears to these sounds can be really useful. Now, 31 equal can only approximate some of these, and to varying strength, but 31 can be a really useful system to become sort of acquainted with this basic 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 kind of structure. Down here, we also have 31 equals relative error and approximation of harmonics 16 to 32, the odd harmonics. So we can see the 17th harmonic is off. The 19th harmonic is really quite far off. The 21st harmonic is pretty close. The 23rd is pretty far missed. We do have a pretty accurate 25th harmonic, and the reason we have that is because our fifth harmonic right here is only off by one cent, and so the 25th harmonic is basically the fifth harmonic of a fifth harmonic, so it's only off by about two cents. The 27th harmonic is off by quite a lot. 29th harmonic is way off, and the 31st harmonic is off by quite a lot as well. So you end up with some pretty decent approximations, but also some pretty big fails. Here are some useful core voicings that you'll probably want to know. So this is a simple root, octave, fifth, major third. There's our harmonic seven right there. Here's our ninth. Here is our harmonic 11 sound or the super 11th sound. Here is our neutral 13 sound or neutral six sound. And then we have our major seven up here on top. In this voicing, we have the harmonic 11 on the bottom next to the perfect fifth that creates a really nice crunch. And then we've got our harmonic seven and a root. This is a pretty buzzy chord. It's a pretty simple, small voicing. Here we have a harmonic seven, then a root, kind of that similar voicing we had over here. And now we have the major third and then the harmonic 11. So similar to the previous voicing, it's kind of a compact, buzzy little harmonic timbre. In this voicing, we take the 11th harmonic approximation, put it right next to the third harmonic approximation, and right next to the 13th harmonic approximation. This gives you a really cool, cloudy, mixed interval chord. Here's a simple voicing where you have a simple root, five, like a power chord, and then the harmonic seven and then our major 10th or the major third of our sound. And then you have a major seven. And this is cool because you've got this perfect fifth here, but it's over that harmonic seven. So you're gonna get this interesting clashing quality from the harmonic seven to the major seven sound. And then you can stack that 11th harmonic on top, forming that sort of super 11 or neutral 11 sound. This one, we have quite a widespread voicing. We've got a root, a fifth, We've got a major third here. Now we've got a ninth up here, really widespread voicing, a harmonic 13, and then you can top this off with whatever else you want. 
This voicing here is actually like a major seven chord. So it's a major seven chord voiced with the fifth, the major seven, the root, and the third. But then we have this really nice harmonic 11 or super 11 or neutral 11 type sound on top. This is really special. We basically never hear these in 12 equal. So it's a really useful sound to put in your pocket. And then this is just a basic major seven with a neutral 13 chord. So we've got a root five, three, seven, three again, just so I got this cool like octave major seven thing, and then a neutral 13 on top. This is also a very important structure to know. So it's gonna be a root, a major third, a major seventh. So it's kind of like a normal major seven chord, but then we're gonna take that harmonic seven and turn it into an augmented six. Sometimes this lets that major seven and the augmented six sit a lot better together and mesh, and then you can extend it beyond that with a ninth or the augmented 11 or whatever you want. So there you have it. There is the acoustic overtone approximation scale, the ultra harmonic scale. It is a thing of beauty. And while it's not the best approximation ever, it certainly packs a punch for existing within 31 notes.